The Dirt Labor Day Sales Truckathon event starts this Labor Day at select dealerships. So yeah, definitely come check out the Dirk Truckathon. I'm just kidding. This was a uh, fun little animation I threw together for the upcoming holiday, and it was actually really easy to make. The video is presented in a time-lapse format, but only at 2x speed because with all the assets we use, it really only took me a little over 20 minutes to put the scene together with lighting, animation, and everything. So if you want to watch it in real time, then feel free to slow the video down. And if you know what you're doing, then of course, feel free to double it up at 2x. Links to all the assets will be in the description. So grab some popcorn and let's get started. All right, so in my relatively default Blender scene here, I'm deleting the cube and stuff as usual. And then first step is just going to be appending in that uh, truck model. So rather than going into the file, it's a little easier just to append it in. Uh, now when I did that, I noticed there's a, a few of the widgets that are just kind of part of that rig are in there too, so I deleted those. Um, so just checking out the rig here, it's it's super cool. Um, by the way, you, can, you want to be in pose mode to uh, play with the rig here. And uh, for most of these, I think if you press Alt-R to reset the rotation or um, Alt-G to reset the location, they should kind of snap to the default position. But all sorts of different things we can use on the rig here. Obviously, the wheels moving like this is sort of the most useful thing, but also playing with the, uh, the truck actually being able to kind of rock forward with it when it stops. Um, but next step here is adding in some uh, sort of like a ground plane. And I'm adding subdivision to that because... What I want to do is uh, the texture I'll be using has some displacement on it. So just starting off with a, a somewhat higher poly mesh so that that displacement can kind of work the way it's supposed to, but just a really basic plane there. Um, so then right away, moving into getting my interface set up a little bit, um, you know, right now, just the default gray world, of course, but uh, getting a camera set up. This is how I usually set my cameras up. So I just added in an empty there and then adding back in a camera and then parenting that camera to the empty so that it can be centered on the scene and I just rotate the camera, or sorry, rotate the empty and the camera will kind of move with it. So just sort of setting up that first shot there and for lighting using an HDRI, you can kind of do whatever you want here, but uh, for something like this, you know, keeping it quick and easy, using a, an HDRI is a really easy way to fill out that background. The one, in, the one I'm using here is the, the Pink Sunrise from uh, HDRI Haven. I'll put a link to all the assets we're using in the description, of course. But um, just in the in the shader editor, if you go to the World tab, you can add in some mapping nodes and, and control the rotation. Um, so that's kind of what I wanted, just sort of that that mountain in the background with sort of the pink, pink sky I thought looked pretty good. So once that's set up, um, adding in some rock assets. These were also from Blend Swap. I think they're CC0, but I'll give some credit and a link in the description. Um, oh, sorry, not, okay, not the rocks yet. This is the texture. So I think Rocks Ground 06 is what I used. Um, so when you download one of those textures from HGRI or Texture Haven, it's all the same website, um, it'll come with a blend file that actually has the material already set up. So super easy to use, just appending that material into the file. Um, and then right there on the displacement settings is kind of how you can see how that works, just affecting the scale. Now, you need quite a bit of subdivision. Um, you can see I'm turning off optimal display there so I can see exactly how much subdivision I have. Um, but just so that some of those rocks and stuff pop out. Now, I didn't want to add too much because I don't want to have to, you know, I don't want to see the wheels going through the ground plane too much. So keeping it relatively flat, but just enough so that there's a little bit of... Um, you know, a little bit of detail on that ground. It's not totally flat. Um, but this is where I'm adding in those rock assets. So that's just a quick way to give some detail to the background. Um, now, the particular rock asset that I'm using came with both high poly and low poly versions. So I actually went into that file and split off the, the low poly versions into their own collection. And that's what I appended here. Uh, if you append them all right from the file, they'll probably have both of them. Um, and you can use the high poly, of course, if you're doing a close-up shot, but uh, the, the low poly ones, I think, worked fine for what I was doing here. So just kind of scaling those up super huge, kind of giving a, a little bit of a background. You know, the HDRI is doing the, the work of the sky, but, you know, just adding in those rocks in the back kind of just helps break up that edge of the, of the ground plane. Um, so just scaling that out a little bit so that I had some more 
space to work with. Um, and when I'm duplicating these rocks, I'm using Alt D so that those are linked duplicates so that they're not um, taking up too much extra data. But putting a little bit in the foreground there as well, it is a good idea to kind of think about your camera shots before you uh, start adding those in. Um, so I just rescaled the ground plane there a little bit and then re-unwrapping it so that um, there was no stretching with the texture. But you wouldn't really even see it with it kind of further in the, the back there. But I wanted to take a moment and talk about the sponsor of today's video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of super sweet classes on an insane breadth of topics from personal growth to business and yes, of course, Blender. For me, even though I'm quite comfortable with the basics of Blender, I'm super passionate about Blender education, so I wanted to see how my good friend Southern Shadi went about introducing the basics. Blender is a difficult software, of course, so this was a great way for me to put myself in a beginner mindset and think more deeply about what it was like when I was just getting started. If you're feeling like you need a run through of the basics, then I highly recommend checking out your first day in Blender 3D by Southern Shadi. Uh, how might you check it out? Well, lucky for you, the first 1,000 people to sign up using the link below will get a free one-month trial of Skillshare where you can check out this course and the whole other range of courses available on Skillshare. Now thinking a little bit about the actual animation, change my frame rate to 30 frames per second and uh, 8 seconds, 240 frames, I believe is what I settled on for this animation. But yeah, just kind of adding in more rocks, kind of moving them around. Just, um, you know, when you're duplicating rocks, good idea to kind of rotate them around, scale them so that, you know, you don't you don't want to see the same exact rock as asset from the same angle. So um, so now in pose mode, I'm actually um, adjusting the, the Y location of that main um, kind of controller just to have the truck kind of coming into the scene. And then in my graph editor, just kind of adjusting the curves so that we've got sort of a nice coming in and then stopping animation. Now again, we're in 2x speed with this time lapse. So, um, you know, it, it's going to look, uh, it's going to look twice as fast, but just having that come in and come to a relatively quick, but still eased stop. Um, and then this part was a little bit more tricky, you just adjusting this kind of forward rock, you know, like when you, when a car would stop, you kind of have that uh, an object in motion wants to stay in motion. So just sort of adding a little animation to that. You can do it as simple as you want, um, but I just kind of in the graph editor sort of duplicating some some keyframes there so that it kind of like, yeah, just got kind of a nice rock and settle back into uh, its flat place there. So just adjusting those curves until it feels about right. And uh, it's looking looking pretty good. So I think I left it about right there. Of course, the graph editor is always the place you can spend the most time making things look super nice. Um, now, I did also add a little bit of animation. This rig really is fantastic, by the way, thanks to uh, the person who uploaded this uh, this truck model here. Um, but just added a little bit of animation to that kind of front left wheel, just so that it sort of looks like it's going over the rocks and stuff. And you can't actually see the uh, displacement in the... Um, if you're not in the rendered view, I think there's some settings that will allow you to see that. But um, I think later on, I'll actually you know make sure that there's not too much intersection happening. So right here, adding in a empty that I use as the focus object. So um, using depth of field is great here to kind of help blur the background a little bit. And then obviously those rocks in the foreground. Um, so just in the camera settings, setting the uh, turning on depth of field and setting the focus point to that empty. And the empty I parented to the, the truck object itself so that kind of, you know, the focus stays on the truck. But you've got this nice depth of field happening in the foreground and background. Um, so now just adding, you know, you could add the animation to the camera itself. But in this case, I wanted to just add it to that empty that it's parented to. Um, now I wanted to kind of have it panning up a little bit. So now that my camera shot is a little bit more figured out, sort of just moving these rocks around so that they you know, aren't, um, aren't in a bad spot. And, and then also making sure I don't have too many rocks that are just off screen. Cause that's another thing that's just going to slow down your render a little bit. And if you can't see them, don't want to have them in there. So just kind of getting the, getting the shot set up nicely and then duplicating both the camera and the empty it's parented to so that I can have, um, sort of a second shot. And the way I'm adding that second shot is by adding markers. So on the first frame, um, if you press M in the timeline, you can 
bind the camera to marker, I think, or just in that marker drop down. Um, and what that'll do is just basically say, you know, at this point in the time frame or in the timeline, you'll have this camera and then, you know, moving halfway through the animation, but on frame 121, adding another marker where it switches to that second camera, which you can see I'm giving its, um, giving its own animation to that camera. Now to make these shots seem sort of consistent, I wanted to have the sort of speed of motion remain about the same. So that's just something in the graph editor, just kind of tweaking those curves, you know, how much motion there is so that, um, you know, it's not too jarring when you're switching between the shots. You know, it's, it's not perfect in the example I did, but uh, obviously something with more time that you can, you know, get looking exactly right. Um, but I think it turned out okay. Now, right there, just sort of making some adjustments to the rock placements as well as the ground plane so that there's, you know, just you, know, you got a nice composition going on. Nothing's intersecting too much. Um, you know, obviously you want the car in the middle to be the hero, but, um, you know, still have a little bit of that detail in the foreground and background. So I set a render border there so I wasn't getting too distracted by the um, things outside. Control B was a hockey there. And then just to make it look a little bit more cinematic, adding in a rectangular area light, turn up the power. And then I don't do this a lot, but I adjusted the spread so that I wasn't getting so much light on the surrounding rocks, but instead it was kind of just pointing down onto the, um, onto the truck itself. So it kind of comes into that light. Um, now I'm going to add an image texture here, but just sort of playing with the, the colors, the material set up really nice right off the bat, but um, this is my classic sticker sheet. You know, if you want to add some decals to the truck, I encourage you to just, you know, make a black and white file and then use that. Um, and then just very simple project from view, just sort of pressing L to select these islands here and just getting the areas that I want to have the decal on all selected. And then I think I just did, had done a project from view to get the, the UV. So just going into the side view and then you project from view and then just kind of placing that right where I want it on that quote sticker sheet. Now, a lot of people always ask me if I can like, where can I get the sticker sheet, but just use any software, you know, you can even do it in Blender, um, but just black and white, you know, put your logo on there, put your URL, whatever else, you know, you know, car icons or something you want to put on there, but just, you know, select an area, unwrap it, and then just sort of move it onto, you know, where it goes on your texture, just so that you can kind of, yeah, you can add as many decals and things like that as you want. Make it your own custom truck. Um, but yeah, thought that that looked pretty good. Now, the advantage of working with the black and white is that then I can just add in this color ramp and, you know, change the, um, basically the, so what was white, I turned to the red color, um, which it does, it's, it's the dirk color. I don't know if it's red or orange. It's a lot of uh, debate over that, but um, and then, you know, leaving what was black, white. So just doing that all on the color ramp, then just checking it out. So did a little bit of more animation to make sure that the wheels didn't come off the ground or go through the ground too much. So just adding some animation to um, that kind of back wheel there, just so that a little bit more motion happening. You can see I've got a little bit of a bump there and then kind of making that come down a little bit, just checking that in the rendered view. Now you wouldn't want to move your texture around on the ground plane after you did this because it's gonna move where that displacement's happening, but really that's about it. You know, it's a really fast way to get a pretty quick result here, um, just using a lot of nice assets that other people spent a lot of time making and just kind of using them like Lego pieces and putting it all together. So that's about it. Um, I'll, I'll wrap this up now. The Dirk Labor Day Sales Truckathon event starts this Labor Day at select dealerships.